Hey, it's Sol, with news, opinions, and analyses, because news and updates are, you know, close enough to being the same thing. Recently, I got a pretty brutal comment from a former subscriber that did a whole sort of deconstruction piece on how I approach my content. It was sort of long, so I gotta at least respect the effort. Putting aside the more snide accusations of being a smug, blind fanboy, and not doing analysis of what he or she wanted me to do an analysis on, there were key statements that had me reflect on what subjects I choose to put more effort into, and what news I save and aggregate for Friday's news. So now you know I at least read the comments. I'll be touching on complaints on the camera's zoom nerf, and it's been a while since this news dropped, so I'm not sure if I'll be able to add anything new to the conversation. According to PTR feedback though, Archimon-sized fights are nearly unplayable, which I think is a bit overblown given my experience. I'm actually a bit more concerned that the post-patch raid scene is overall a lot harder due to the class changes, but I'll gloss over that in another video. The other week, instead of a full piece, I just made a short highlight about the upcoming reduction to the maximum distance your camera pans back in the World of Warcraft. In a nutshell, the maximum zoom of the camera normally looks like this. All you gotta do is go into your config cache file in your WTF folder and change the set camera distance max value from 15 to 30. Okay, that method is real, but it's unintuitive. There is an easier way. Typing a special console command lets you increase the zoom all the way out to here. If you didn't know about it until recently, just copy the string from the description below. It's pretty hard to analyze the feature itself any further because, frankly, it's pretty self-explanatory. It's a camera. Maybe I'm condescending when I simply say, see for yourself. In my previous video, I gave this very quick opinion of it, and here it is. Players have been in an uproar over a recent PTR and beta update over the sudden disappearance of a console command that allowed users to zoom much further out than the game slider allowed. In light of this, I personally learned that while I knew about this console command, apparently I had it off for many, many years, and in fact, I thought it was on. So based on that, I'm guessing I'm not alone when I think that this change is not a big deal. Hey, and no joke, I really thought that I had it on for like years, so think what you will. I think I'm an idiot for not noticing. Anyway, that was my opinion and there's no take backs. I really don't think it's a big deal. Others think it's a huge deal. And others still probably don't know about it and may never know about it. But I'm bringing this topic back up not because the topic itself is this damning change that's going to make Legion a non-starter. That debate can rage on until faces turn blue. But I'll be holding on to this topic as I address questions of why almost 12 years had to go by before this change had to happen. Supposedly had to happen. Critics could and have said that this is a situation where Blizzard is fixing something that isn't broken, or fixing a solution with a problem. Or it's a further dumbing down to casuals. It could be. Similar statements have been made about the many iterations of the talent system, flight, reforging, pruning, LFR, and I can go on as long as someone doesn't like something. When the official statement was made, the following was said, that for everyone else, they, as in players who didn't know how far they could zoom out, probably won't see what the big deal is since it's removing a hidden option that most never used. That most never used. Interesting choice of words, which translates into literally a majority of players had a use adoption rate of zero. Granted, it's hidden. You needed to input a script or go into your config cache file in your WTF folder and change the whatever, whatever, whatever. But to say that most never used it, is it hyperbole or does Blizzard have the data to back it up? It's possible. This sort of data gathering is called a user experience analysis, which is a practice typically done during game development, but done very rarely after a game is launched, because a game's support lifecycle is usually short, it's just not necessary. Usually this practice is reserved for software with longer life cycles. The reason for this is to ensure that software remains friendly, engaging, intuitive, and effective whether you're a brand new user or an 11 to 12 year veteran of the software. The longer the life of the software, the more important this experience needs to feel similar or be in parity. And that's extremely important to remember. Take Microsoft Windows for example. Windows XP launched in 2001, three years before WoW was launched. Since then, while most of the core of Windows functionality and advanced options is still there, it's gone through a ton of changes based on user feedback, improvements, and analysis, mostly for the purpose of improving usability and keeping everyone on the same page. Mostly. As WoW approaches its sixth expansion, Windows has gone through four major revisions after Windows XP. Arguably, most of these platforms have improved on their usability and accessibility for users of different proficiency levels. They've at least made strides. Now, I bet you're already drawing other witty comparisons and shaking your head like, Ooh, I can totally nail this guy, but let's leave the analogy here. Hopefully you get at least the spirit of what I'm trying to say, that Blizzard's making strides to improve the overall experience for all of its players, with varying results. 
I'm not familiar with laws around transmitting personal data, but it doesn't sound impossible, unreasonable, or illegal that Blizzard can read certain user setting data from players' clients. It's as simple as surveying the information on your client, that config cache file in your whatever folder. Doing so, they can know how many of its users use specific graphic settings, interface options, and what they have their maximum zoom set to. Deductive reasoning could have been used too, even by us non-Blizzard people. The camera command has been in since launch, if I'm not mistaken, and while it's easy enough for users to use the console command, the community has also been known to make requests to take very popular features and add-ons and make them into Blizzard's default UI. Blizzard feels the same way when they think something's cool. Examples of this include the inclusion of voice chat, revealing item level, and creating the pre-made group tool. In my searching, I haven't seen a massive outcry or call to action to incorporate double the zoom into the slider function so that everyone can enjoy it. At least not till now, with it going away. From this criteria alone, I'm going to draw a conclusion, and it's just my opinion, so feel free to disagree, but the camera option in the long run has been harmful to the game. Removing the function improves the user experience for the majority of players and brings parity to players of different proficiencies. Let's elaborate. This feature has been available since launch and has wide adoption among higher end raiders and basically players who want to enjoy the greater situational awareness. It's probably safe to assume that outside of this space, the adoption of this feature is much, much smaller, evidenced by the criteria that I gave. What this does is create a disparity among players, a difference of I know this versus I don't know this. Blizzard has one of two choices to make. One was to sensibly make this maximum distance an option in the default UI. It's fair. It makes sense. Give everyone the advantage and then no one has the advantage, right? But taking it away from everyone means the same thing. That in its own way is fair. It also makes sense. It just invokes some anger, that's all. It's extremely difficult for some players to realize, but 12 years of WoW means that there is a massive gap of knowledge between hardcore veterans and the guy who saw the movie and wanted to see what this Warcraft MMO is all about. Even the smallest representation of brand new or inexperienced players means that there's gotta be parity and compromises have to be made. Too few players were vocal about making this setting all-inclusive after nearly 12 years. We got what we asked for, and we didn't ask for anything. So is this a lost cause? Maybe. Short of hacks or a sudden update as I'm recording this video, haha, we're not going to see Zoom go further than what was originally designed. But that's not the only change to the camera that occurred. A new variable was added to the camera functionality and it sums up to one name, Action Cam. I've showcased it briefly in other videos, but I'll go into it a bit more. Action cam functionality allows for the camera to dynamically move in certain situations, but most specifically, while it doesn't allow the camera to move any further out than intended, it allows the position of the camera to loosely change depending on the angle as well as what is being targeted. In other words, the camera is no longer locked to have your character at the center of the screen, and that opens up some really cool possibilities, one of which is already well into development. MP Stark is creating an add-on within the beta and the PTR called Dynamic Cam, and here it is. Notice that when I attack the Shaw of Anger, the camera zooms back and sort of loosens up, angling in such a way that we can see our character at the bottom of the screen, and most of the Shaw at the same time. And this is a melee user's dream. This sort of angle isn't normally possible because right now the camera will always keep our characters in the center of the screen, resulting in these weird angles and upskirt shots. This new dynamic angle gives us the scope and scale of large creatures but still gives us a good look of what's in front and beside us, and of course we can move the camera above to look for threats around us. Dynamic cam doesn't exactly solve problems, but it does open doors for other add-ons that can make use of this camera to do who knows what. Blizzard, for better or worse, strives to accommodate for all of its players. It is a bit off-putting that it took 12 years to make a change under the premise that the game was never intended to be experienced in this way, but the reasons aren't what I'd call arbitrary. You may agree or disagree with their design decisions, and that's all well and good. Talk about it. No buts. Just, you know, keep it civil. And that's it for today. Dynamic Cam is being developed by M.T. Stark, and if you absolutely can't wait to try out his stuff, you can go to his Discord link down in the description below to get the latest version, or wait till it's formally released on sites like Curse or WoW Interface. Thanks for watching. Like and sub, share your thoughts in a comment below, and I'll see you guys next time. I'm Sol. Stay breezy, guys. Yay!